maybe you guys are in the same situation. Maybe you don't feel like yourself anymore. And if this seems like you, try... It's Jess. So today is the first day of the new year. Happy new year. The new year typically signifies a new beginning, new fresh starts, time for new goals, aspiration, dreams, resolutions, and time for like new habits and mindsets to set in. So as you can tell by the title, that's what we're talking all about today. We are talking all about how to kick 2020 off right and how to make sure that this year is your best year. So if all of that sounds good, you are in the right place. If you are not subscribed yet, make sure you hit that subscribe subscribe button down below to join the family. And with that, let's hop on into it. All right, so first things first, we are gonna kick off this video by talking about goals and getting stuff done. And what better place to talk about making things happen and going places than a car. I just wanted interesting locations to be in throughout this video, so that's why we're here, in case you're wondering. Um, but goals, resolutions, whatever you want to call them, we make them at the beginning of the year. First thing you should do from taking those goals to being just ideas and dreams and making them a reality is to be specific and concise with your goals. So instead of just picking like 15 or 20 big resolutions you want to do this year, instead narrow it down a bit. Narrow it down to three to five specific concise goals. So instead of saying, I want to get fit this year, instead be concise and say something along the lines of, I want to be able to lift 20 pounds this year. I want to be able to run a mile without stopping. I want to be able to chase after my kids without being winded. And that brings me to my next point about making your goals a reality. You have to have the two P's. The two P's are plan and purpose. The plan, is the tangible steps that you need to take to making your goal happen. And your purpose is your driving force, your motivator, why you are doing this in the first place. You always need to remember your why. So for example, if your resolution is, I don't know, to start a YouTube channel, sure, that's a good one. First, you gotta have a plan. First things first, you have to film your first video. What is your first video going to be? What steps do you need to take? Do you need to like storyboard or write out what your video is? Do you need to uh, get a camera and give yourself a step-by-step -step guide that you can follow? And then your second thing, your purpose is why do you want to start a YouTube channel? Why do you want to do this thing? Is it because you want to make cool stuff and have a creative outlet? Boom, there you go. So now every time you feel unmotivated or discouraged or you're like, why am I doing this in the first place? Think about your original why. Think about your purpose and let that be your driving force. The next thing that goes hand in hand with this is working smarter, not harder. Now this is a saying that I'm sure we have all heard. It's a cliche. It's so much a cliche that we almost tune it out a little bit, but take a second and just think how many of us have actually stopped and taken the time to figure out how to work smarter, not harder. I feel like very few of us to be quite honest, but if you take the time to figure out how to work smarter, not harder, or maybe how you work best, you are going to up your productivity and efficiency so much. 2019, I realized that the time that I work best, most efficiently, most productively, is from the times of like 7.30 to 3 p.m. Once like 2.30, 3 p.m. hits, it's like my, my productivity, it went in the trash and now there's a dumpster fire and I can't do anything. Whereas on the contrary, my husband has found out that he works best and most efficiently after 6 p.m., which I will never understand. I'm like, what? But figuring out how you work best, how to work smarter, not harder, is essential for becoming more productive and efficient and ultimately successful. So whether that means figuring out at what time of day you work best, or maybe it's upgrading in a piece of software or a device, or maybe it's playing a podcast in the background while you're working instead of music. Also, when you're working, you have to accept putting in the work. Sometimes things take time. Things take a lot of effort and time and hard work and consistency, and you just got to you gotta push through it sometimes. You just have to realize that things take time, things take work. If you plant a seed, it's not gonna become a giant redwood in a day. It takes time, it takes care, it takes nurturing that thing. So I really want you guys to keep that in mind because a lot of us, I think, get caught up in this instant gratification thing, especially in this time period we live in where we're so used to instant gratification. If we do something, we want it to be an instant result. And that's just, 
that's simply not it. It's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take time and consistency and work. You also have to accept that sometimes when you do something, things don't always happen how you expect them to. So don't be disappointed if things don't happen immediately or how you expect them to because life has kind of a funny way of working things out. You just have to trust the timing of your life and accept that, you know, sometimes things are out of your control, but you just do your best. Now, my next point that I want to drive home to you guys is if you are drowning, ask for help. We cannot do it all by ourselves. You just, you can't. You, it is impossible to do everything by yourself all of the time. If you are drowning, if you need help, ask for help. I can promise you guys from my own experience that delegating, outsourcing, and just asking for help will make you so much more productive and efficient. It will free up so much of your time. And my last little note on this before we jump into our next topic is you gotta celebrate the tiny victories. Even the baby steps are still steps. So take the time to celebrate those tiny victories. Celebrate the progress that you are making because even if it seems small in the moment, all of those small bits of progress and growth and baby steps, they're gonna add up to a whole lot. Let me tell you that. It's gonna make you feel a heck of a lot more motivated to keep doing it because you see the results, you see the progress. It's just a major confidence booster and it really solidifies and concretes the idea that you can. And that brings us into mindset. Now I think mindset is the most essential as well as probably the most underrated thing when it comes to being successful and happy. Having a good positive mindset for the future, for your career, for whatever, is so important. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about when it comes to mindset is how you think about yourself. So I know a lot of us, we love a good self-deprecating joke, you know, here and there. And a lot of us, they're not jokes anymore. We talk so negatively and so self-deprecatingly about ourselves that it really ingrains into us. Even if it is just a joke, even if it is just a tweet, even if it is just like a side comment, talking negatively about ourselves really does affect us, how we do things, how we see ourselves, and ultimately the boundaries we set for ourselves. So by talking negatively about ourselves, even if it is just a joke, we gotta stop doing it. We gotta toss it in the trash. Next time we have a self-deprecating or negative thought or joke about ourselves, don't even say it. And that also goes hand in hand with being kind to yourself. Stop being so hard on yourself. And this is something that I, struggle with immensely. I'm so hard on myself. I have such unrealistically high standards for myself that I constantly feel let down by myself. And that is something that I think a, a lot of people struggle with. It's not just me. It's not just a handful of people. I think a lot of us hold a lot of really high expectations for ourselves. Understand that you can't do it all. Sometimes you just gotta roll with the punches and every time you have to be kind to yourself. And also be kind to other people. Stop talking so negatively about other people. Stop gossiping. When you do that, it's just a reflection on yourself. It reflects your insecurities. By spending your time talking negatively about other people, one, you're wasting a whole lot of time doing that. And two, you're bringing negativity into your life. The next mindset that you have to get into, it is absolutely so necessary, is that growth is the most important thing. Growth is even bigger and better and more uh, key than the end result because growth shapes you as a person. Growth makes you a better person. Growth comes from experiences, knowledge, and uncomfortable times. It teaches you how to be a better person, a smarter person, a stronger person. Sometimes things get thrown your way that you don't want and that you're like, no, I don't want this to happen, but you shouldn't fear it. And instead you should embrace it with a warm hug. Now the last mindset that I want to share with you guys that has been game changing for me, and I think will be game changing for all of you guys in 2020 is the concept of saying thank you instead of sorry. Now I put this into practice last year. I shared it in a video a lot of you guys resonated with it. What it is, is essentially replacing I'm sorry with thanking someone. So instead of just apologizing for no reason, because a lot of us say I'm sorry for no reason, replace it with a thank you. So for example, next time you're running late, instead of saying, I'm so sorry for being late, I'm always late, I'm blah, 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 say thank you so much for waiting for me. I really appreciate it. And making the more negative experience a positive one. All right, so now let's talk about happiness and confidence. So I think the number one thing we all need to do in 2020 that will just make us so much more happy and confident is stop trying to constantly 
please other people. Stop seeking for other people's validation. Stop seeking for their approval. This one is hard, honestly. Like this is something that I have struggled with throughout my whole life because I am so innately a people pleaser. I'm always doing things, hoping to make other people proud, to make other people happy. But something I really, really learned is that at the end of the day, the thing that's going to make me the most happy is doing things for me, doing things to make myself proud, doing things to make myself happy, doing things for my own approval. Now, this is not to say don't help people because of course you should totally help people and be kind to people. And we already talked about that, but this goes for like doing things just because you feel obligated to for other people to make them happy, but your happiness is being sacrificed. Stop that and instead make yourself proud. Something I feel like a lot of adults struggle with, especially once you've left school or especially, especially if you work from home or you're a stay at home mom, or you're just like kind of in your own bubble sometimes, it is hard to find people that you connect with, that you get along with. And like, how do you even meet people when you're an adult? Do you go to like a bar? That's weird. No, that's like a dating thing. Do you just talk to strangers in the grocery store? No, that also seems kind of weird. Where do you find people to be friends with? If you feel like you don't really know where to find friends or how to make friends anymore, try joining and being a part of something bigger, whether that's a community dodgeball group, a book club, a Bible study, a church, something bigger, something you have an interest in because by joining that, I don't know, book club or whatever it is, you're gonna find people who are interested in the same thing, who are like-minded, who have the same like interests, hobbies, maybe even goals or aspirations as you do. And going to those places with like-minded people is going to bring you friends and help you build relationships. One thing that I think really hinders our happiness is lack of communication. Telling people when you are frustrated, have a problem with them, are sad, they did something to make you feel annoyed or embarrassed. And not communicating this allows for resentment and ultimately just for you not to be happy. So if oftentimes you find yourself resenting other people because of unsaid uh, frustrations with them, talk to people, communicate with people, let people know when you are mad, upset, frustrated, when they did something to hurt your feelings, communicated. And I know communication is really intimidating and confrontation is not exciting, but it's gotta happen. It has to happen. You have to put things out into the open and communicate and let people know because if you don't ever present a problem, it can't ever get fixed. So in 2020, we're communicating, things are gonna get hard, but things always get harder before they get easier. So let's head back outside to mix things up. I'm kind of running out of like spaces in my in-laws house that doesn't have people in it currently to film. So let's head back outside where it's really cold. All right, guys, I am back outside. I have gloves this time. I have hand warmers in my pockets and I have a cozy scarf tucked in. So I'm a lot more prepared than I was earlier, especially because it, it has gotten colder. So kind of needed to be, but um, uh, yeah, let's talk about uh, mental health and self-care this year. So the first thing that I found to be absolutely so quintessential for me just being happy and healthy and in just a very good state of mind is spending time on me and not just like, oh, self-care, me time. No, I mean like really spending time on yourself, spending time with yourself, spending time doing things that you love, finding a hobby or like a, a thing that you like to do where you get to just be yourself, do something that you really enjoy and just be by yourself. So for example, mine are like cooking and baking and gardening and taking care of my plants, home decorating, home making, like all of those things are my hobbies and passions. And I kind of briefly talked about this on Instagram, maybe in like November or December about taking time to become myself again, because towards the end of last year, I really felt that I had kind of lost sight of what made me me. I had really gotten into this routine of working, putting out a video, a video, an edit, and blah, blah, blah. And I'd always just kind of be so content focused and career focused that I, didn't really feel like myself anymore because I really neglected me. I really just didn't do things for myself anymore. I was creating content to make an algorithm happy so my channel wouldn't die. And I wasn't cooking and baking and gardening and planting and homemaking. I wasn't doing any of the things I loved anymore. I realized this 
and I started spending time like an hour or two every day doing something I really truly enjoyed. I started trying out new recipes again. I started like finally taking care of my plants that desperately needed to be repotted and just like doing all of these things that brought me joy. And I found myself feeling like me again. I think that that was the most important thing that I learned last year, doing things you love again. Try spending time on yourself, by yourself, for yourself. This next little bit lick kind of piggybacks off the last one is if you are constantly spending time on other people and not yourself, you are going to be in a bad place. You cannot pour from an empty cup. I say that all the time. That is a uh, quote and thought that I always keep in my back pocket because it is so true. If you are always like taking care of other people and not taking care of yourself, you're gonna have nothing left for you. You're going to just be kind of like all like a dried up well. You're gonna be a, like a crispy flower that hasn't been watered in a long time. You have to make sure that you are a priority. And it is so amazing to help other people, do things for other people, do things out of the kindness of your heart and selflessly, but you also have to be selfish sometimes. You also have to make sure you are taking care of yourself because if you are not taking care of yourself, you can't take care of other people. It is like that thing on airplanes when the air mask drop down, you know, in the safety instruction guide. When the air masks come down, put yours on before assisting other people. You cannot help other people unless you help yourself first. All right, next, a big one. Stop saying yes to every single obligation to either make other people happy or because you feel obligated to or just because you don't know how to say no. Because if you do this, your plate will be so full, you will be so stressed, you will have so much going on in your brain that you will explode. Sometimes you just need times when you're not busy. You have to have blank moments in time to recharge, to re-energize. Do you know how like your best ideas come to you in the shower? It's because you have a time where you're just like not surrounded by 10 million things, thinking about 10 million things. You have time to actually just be and exist and all of a sudden, you kind of have creativity going on. You have ideas, imagination, and things sparking. My penultimate piece of advice for self-care and mental health is to unfollow people who make you feel like crap on social media. If you follow people that every time you see their posts, you feel annoyed or frustrated, or you find yourself comparing yourself, or you feel sad, or you feel frustrated, like, why can't I have a life like that person? Why can't I look like that person? Unfollow all those people. Unfollow them right now. Following people like that is so, oh, it's so toxic. It's so not good because you are constantly then comparing yourself to other people and it's bad. It is not good. And I got into this rut because you follow all these people and you're like, at first you like their content. You're like, wow, they make really neat things. They travel to all these cool places. They're really neat to like listen to, or I like their personality. But then over time, especially if you were a content creator, you might find yourself comparing yourself to their content. Or if you're just a consumer, you might be like, well, why isn't my life like that? Why don't I look like that? Oh, that is a bad road to go down. And you do not want to be there. I did this maybe like six or eight months ago, I did a huge purge because I was like, why am I following these people that every time I see their posts, I feel not great. So I went on an unfollowing spree and I unfollowed like 500 people. I genuinely unfollowed so, so many people. And then after that, when I was on my feed, I felt so much better. I felt inspired. I felt empowered. It was fun to be on social media again, instead of discouraging and depressing. And my last little self-care and mental health piece of advice is to unplug every so often. Hop off of social media for a while, hop off of your phone and just don't be on your phone. Like have maybe a couple hours, maybe every day, every week, or maybe have a whole day each week that you're not on your phone. Instagram and Facebook and Twitter, all of that stuff should be a good experience. It should be fun and inspiring and empowering. But you know, when you're on it too much, it gets a little not so great. I promise that having a little social media break and just being off your phone for a while will be so refreshing and feel amazing. So we are going to end this video by talking about habits to incorporate into your life in 2020. So the first habit that I think is so just necessary that you gotta do, especially as you get older, is you gotta learn how to take responsibility for your actions. When you mess up, when you screw up, Learn to take the blame. Learn to say, hey, that's on me, I'm sorry, 
I'll do better next time. Be the person who can own up to their actions, who can say, I'm sorry, but I will do better next time and then improve next time. The next habit is crucial for becoming the best version of yourself and becoming the person that you want to be. Surround yourself with people that you aspire to be like. You are a collection of the five people that you spend your most time with. If you surround yourself with people who are as driven as you want to be and motivated and goal oriented and doing the same kind of cool stuff that you want to be doing, you in turn are going to become motivated and driven and goal oriented and you're going to believe in yourself. But if you surround yourself with people who always tell you, oh, you can't do that, that's impossible. Like you're too dumb for that. You're not good enough for that. You're this, you're that, you're that. You're going to believe it. You're going to internalize it and you're gonna become less motivated and excited about life. And you're not gonna to wanna to make cool things and do cool things. You're just gonna feel like, well, this is my life and that's it. This next habit is something that I don't think people do nearly enough. Read, research, and learn expand your knowledge and expand your brain. It is like the most amazing thing to learn, to learn about whatever, whenever. And we, in this day and age, we have the ability to learn and research and watch documentaries about anything at any time. And I don't think people take enough advantage of that. It is always so amazing to expand your skills, to expand your knowledge and just like learn because then it's going to help you become the best version of yourself. It's going to make you more hireable. It's going to make you a better conversationalist. It's going to make you more interesting, engaging. You're always going to have something fun or cool to share or talk about. And you know, it's cool to learn things. It's cool to know things. And knowledge is amazing. Knowledge is power. So, you know what? Spend some time picking up some new skills or habits or learning something, whether it's how to cook or a new language or, you know, a computer software. Maybe you're going to learn Maya. You're going to learn 3D animation this year. And our final habit that we're going to end today's video on is stop talking and start doing. So many people talk about all the things they're gonna do. They're gonna do this, they're gonna do that. Oh yeah, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. But are you actually doing it? Are you actually taking all the words that you're spitting out all the time that you're spending talking about the things you're going to do? Are you actually doing them? Or are you spending more time talking about doing something then you are actually doing that something. Sometimes we don't think we have the resources. Sometimes we don't think we're smart enough or good enough, or sometimes we're just plain old lazy. But if any of that is you, put all that to the side and start doing. Stop just talking in theory, put it into practice. I read once and I found it to be very true that motivation dies within seven seconds. Yeah, it's true. I, I have found time and time again, when I have a surge of motivation, if I let seven seconds or more pass, I don't want to do it anymore. So if you have that strike of motivation, act on it. If you feel inspired in a moment, don't put it off till later, do it now. Whether it's a YouTube channel, your fitness journey, your uh, desire to cook, your learning a new language, whatever the case might be, this year in 2020, this is the year of action. This is the year of doing. So stop talking and start doing. All right, so it's starting to snow, so I probably should wrap this up. So thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I really hope that you guys got some value and some good ideas to kick this new year off right because I really want this year to be the year for all of us. Like 2020, it's going to be it, putting it out there. We're praying for it, we're hoping for it, putting it into the universe, whatever you believe. But this year, we're gonna make it awesome. So now let's move into my quote of the day segment. And today's quote of the day is very fitting for New Year's. So today's quote says, ask yourself if what you're doing today is getting you closer to where you want to be tomorrow. Those words are so powerful because basically when it comes all down to it, to accomplish a goal, you gotta take the small steps every single day. It's consistency that is the key to making your dreams a reality. So think about that every single day as we go throughout this year. Thank you guys so, so much for watching today's video. I hope you have the most amazing 2020. I love you guys lots and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys. Oh, there's a deer. Hello, little deer. It's a baby. I would show you guys, but I think if I were to like move the camera, I think it gets scared. But it's very cute. Hey! Hey, little guy!